Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, this video is a couple of things. Number one, it is a brief test. How well can we do video production and how does the recording and such work on the same computer with an updated operating system? As many of you know, I was running Linux Mint 18.3 for a long time because... I don't want to push updates, have to work around with new software and things like that. But while I do that, I do run an Endeavor OS, which always has the latest software. So I can always be testing and probing and prodding. And now was the time for me to switch my computer over to Linux Mint 20.2. So this is the latest Linux Mint as we are running right now. And what I'm seeing right now so far, now I didn't just dive right on into this. I actually upgraded my uh, work laptop to Linux Mint 22 uh, about a month or two ago. And I wanted to play around with that and make sure all the bugs were worked out, make sure it was stable and things like that. I've had no kernel panics, no other issues or problems on that computer at all. And so I said, well, it's about time to upgrade this one. Now, for those people wanting to upgrade, in my case, I built my system with an icy dock so I can hot swap drives. So rather than wipe out the drive, what I do is I'm going to just buy a new drive, pull the old one out. And so if there's some weird problem, it's like, oh, I just got to get something done that I don't have time to mess with something. I can pop the old one back in. And right now it still works fine. There were some issues with it. Uh, Firefox and OBS no longer interfaced. Uh, of course, Waterfox was is old and got horribly compromised with the purchase of system uh, by System One, and there were a few other things that that were out there. Now, I do actually need to. I still need to install. I think one more application that I didn't yet, and that is Audacity. Um, as much as Audacity is being problematic, I do things with professional audio production that Audacity has to be installed for. Uh, that being said, I'll probably continue doing some of my podcasts on the old build until I have time to research the current versions and what I need to do to lock down Audacity. Um, but that's the only thing that is missing. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a brief tour. I'll walk through uh, how I have my system set up, my theming, and the applications that I'm using. Of course, as you know, I work off of the desktop. This is why I cannot stand GNOME and any other desktop uh, system that is doing away with desktop icons. This is where you work. And then you store things that you don't need on a day-to-day -day basis on the inside. So right now, um, I have the news prepped. So I have my, my news thumbnails ready to go. I have my news articles here. Of course, I do keep a copy of the news that got banned. <laughs> How dare me actually share data from the Centers for Disease Control. Um, and then uh, I do have an, an app image there. It's a teleprompter. That's more of a backup. I should just get rid of that. But uh, And then... A few other texts, uh, ideas that I have, video descriptions and stuff that I use uh, for just uh, doing some formatting things. So what I did with the theming on this is I'm using a uh, I'm using the mint the new mint Y yellow icons, and I've never been a huge fan of how Mint does the system tray icons, but that's okay. I'm just going to deal with those rather than uh, do anything else. But then I am using a customized theme which matches the black and yellow in my uh, my uh, channel colors. And so I actually did a video maybe about a year or so ago about how you can create your own themes in Linux Mint Cinnamon. And so that's what I did. I used, the, um, I used that, basically the same theme I created there, and I just changed all of the you know, alternate colors over to the yellow because I really like that theme. I've been using it on a few of the things. You can see how I have my setup here. This is actually giving me uh, battery indicators on the keyboard and the mouse. And you can see that OBS is recording. I always put my um, show desktop icon over here to minimize all windows. 
um, just makes it really easy to use. I have installed the web browsers. I use Chromium as what I actually use for doing all of the YouTube type stuff. I have a Firefox, which I have hardened down. I'm thinking about unhardening the Firefox because I also have LibreWolf, which is by nature hardened down and will probably keep itself hardened even better. Uh, because I've always kept one browser where I allow the cookies, I allow all the nonsense just for the simplicity of having some functionality working a little bit better. So I might do that. Um, basically, LibreWolf then would replace Firefox on my old build, and then Firefox would replace Waterfox on my old build. Chromium maintains being the same use. As far as the applications, uh, and on my launch bar, I didn't change, I didn't remove or anything Firefox. I could probably take that out. I added uh, OBS, and uh, I should actually also add um, Caden Live to that. So let's go ahead and add that to favorites as well. So that way I can quickly go to Caden Live. I don't use this button as much on this build because I actually have templates built in my uh, create new document menu. So the WNR is what I use for weekly news roundup. If I do a top five video, the news I use for just a basic video and I don't usually use the basic video one anymore. I could probably just delete that. If I do create a 60 frame per second video on the full on camera, that's what I use that for. And same with the um, 60 frame per second top five. So I don't generally use the Caden Live link, but it's nice to have it there. Um, I can probably remove the uh, Nemo link from there because I do put it down in my quick launch menu and I do use this OBS menu all the time. So down here, I just keep the things I regularly use, which would be VirtualBox, Nemo, uh, Terminal, and my three web browsers. I did remove some applications. Linux Mint does come with some things that I will not use. Um, so like Hypnotics, uh, while I might use it on my other laptop and it's there, I did uninstall it. I uninstalled the Redshift because I think, you know, red color lights at night is a bunch of nonsense. And there is some science to back that up. Uh, so there, um, there's a few applications that I have gotten rid of that I just don't need. Um, I got rid of uh, Thunderbird, for example, comes pre-installed. I got rid of Rhythmbox, that comes pre-installed. A lot of things like that. It's not necessarily as much bloat as I might call it. It's just it's software that this computer is has dedicated purposes that those things will not be used with. I did add uh, KeePass XC because that is what I use to manage all of my password databases. As far as education, I have Bible time on here. That's not particularly relevant for this user account, but I actually use this computer for all of my channels and my Christian channel. I use Bible time all the time. So um, this computer has uh, four separate user accounts, one for writing done right, one for Tux Traveler, one for Switch to Linux, and one for Our Walk in Christ. So any applications, of course, will be there. If I really wanted to stream this down more, I can just hide Bible time on this particular build. But eh, why bother? I might have the computer on be like, what's that verse say? Um, so as far as graphics, uh, Blender, I don't use Blender and Switch to Linux as much. I do actually use it in Our Walk in Christ because I use that build for doing all of the um, uh, book covers and things. And so Blender, I use Blender to do 3D rendered book covers. Um, I don't use the drawing application, but I said it, I'll keep it there. Maybe I will uh, get the uh, inkling to actually use it at some point in time. Of course, I use GIMP every, uh, every day and then uh, Inkscape. If I happen to need to do some vector manipulation, I have it installed for that purpose. As far as internet, I don't use FileZilla as much here, but again, I do use it on Our Walk in Christ because I do podcasts on that, that channel and I use FileZilla to drop the podcasts directly where they need to go. And then um, I kept Transmission because I do, of course, download torrent um, torrents with uh, um, distro downloads. And then I did keep the web apps. I may or may not have much use for it in the future, but I did go ahead and keep it. I do use most of LibreOffice, so I kept that installed. I'm not as likely to use the, the databasing or the draw um, on this build. I do use Impress on the Christian uh, channel 
and um, I use Writer on most of them, so I keep those. I added Sigil because I do some ebook management on my other books. Uh, Celluloid, I keep that around as a quick, um, uh, just double click, watch a video, scan through videos, make sure they work. I use Handbrake. This is if I buy a DVD and need a copy of whatever's on there, I can uh, use Handbrake. I also do use it to transcode videos. Sometimes when, depending on the size of the video, I might transcode a smaller version to be uploaded on the BitChute channel at Switch to Linux uh, because BitChute only pushes out video at 720 p anyway and uh being in a van on limited bandwidth then um i don't i want to make sure i'm uploading and downloading the data all you have you can't see the desktop there changed i do have three different desktop screens i created these in blender a long time ago unfortunately i lost the original file so i can't make any edits or modifications to them like uh, i did this like kind of before um before i was closer to pure foss <laughs> skype <laughs> Um, but anyway, I use Simple Screen Recorder, of course, to do uh, any simple screenshots that I might need, uh, simple screen videos. And of course, I do keep VLC on here, very little application in this particular build, but it is something that you might need from time to time. And that is pretty much what I did as far as getting everything ready. I have no idea what this unentitled folder is. Oh, well, I'll... <laughs> delete that if it's <laughs> irrelevant. Uh, but anyway, this is the, the build. I have not had any problems with Linux Mint 20.2 as of yet on any of my um, other computers in my tests. And so I thought it was just about time to do the streaming, especially since you guys have noticed I've not done the Ubuntu video yet. The reason is Ubuntu does not work on my version of VirtualBox on the old machine. Hopefully it does here haven't tested it yet. Um, also, I wanted to do a nice video on MX Linux, um, how to install it, your first steps with it, because I just think MX Linux is an excellent uh, new user distribution. And again, the new version of MX Linux will not work on my old version of VirtualBox, but I know it actually works on uh, VirtualBox 6 that this has because my um, web design computer can run it. It's just my old processing computer could not. And then maybe I'll go back and have a look at Void again because that's why I couldn't get Void running. Uh, Void is so new, it stopped working with my virtual box two years ago when I first tried to look at it. But anyway, that happens to be that. Um, so uh, this is the new build and hopefully um, this will serve me well into the next few years of Switch to Linux. Let me know your thoughts and uh, your comments on the build. Is there any other application I should be looking to use for this? Understanding it's just for media content production. I don't do anything on this computer other than that. I have other computers to do those other things. So anyway, with that, let me know if I'm missing anything or if um, I should look into something for any future videos down the road. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.